so Ivan, I thought today I'll be a little bit more prepared and at least have some questions written down so that if we get stuck, I can at least uh, not let the conversation go to shit. So very nice to meet you. Your, I still don't actually know your surname. I just know you as Ivan Salpor. Or actually, I don't even know that. I know you as Salpor to buy Porsche. Uh, that's um, I, I like. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I'm Ivan Shmatov. Yeah. Shmatov. Okay. Yeah, but uh, normally I keep quiet with my name, my face, and all that, so okay. I, I don't show myself too much. Okay. And do you think are you you happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. The anonymity. Yeah. I feel a little bit exposed. I have to say, I I, w I was always <laughs> in the background, and uh, and yeah, now I've had to come put my ugly face on 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 the internet. So I feel a little bit exposed. So I'm envious of you. But now everyone's going to see your beautiful face. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> dude. So you are where are you from? Russia, Moscow. You from? Uh, did you grow up in Moscow? Yeah, born and raised. Wow. And what was that like? It was okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, and you study, you studied in Moscow? Yeah, I studied in Stroganov. It was a university back then when I entered it and it ended up being an academy again. So there were some reforms done in Moscow. But um, yeah, Stroganov Academy, uh, transportation design, um, a lot of academical things, sculpture, drawings, paintings and all that do you do all those things on on the transportation course as well yeah because it's the academical um, university you have to do this this is the oldest art university in russia so is well, that is that the same is that the place where most russian car designers go to no, no. Uh, everybody goes to mummy okay yeah, that's the famous one now um the the fame the other famous one is um <laughs> the university in saint petersburg yeah. stiglitz academy yeah He's kind of a twin sister of Strong Enough Academy. But I have to say they push a lot. It's really, really a nice place in St. Petersburg. I, okay. used to, I used to live in St. Petersburg for like one year. It's supposed to be beautiful. Huh? Oh, I love it. Uh, the, the city is fantastic. Yeah. So when, when I finished my uh, degree, the master degree in uh, Strong Enough, I moved to St. Petersburg the, the, the next day. Really? To my ex-girlfriend, but <laughs> <laughs> it was really difficult to travel back and forth, you know. <laughs> so Ivan, like, how did you get to this um, point of saying I want to be a car designer? Oh, I, I think it's it's a it's a pretty standard thing. Uh, um, my grandpa was connected to cars. Uh, he had a friend who was a test driver for all the, let's say, Western cars coming to Soviet Union, and he was always. Um, showing me the cars I was driving when I was seven, you know, sitting on a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> um, no car seat. It, yeah, well. I uh, did. I, I also grew up in South Africa in the 80s, so it was also no car seat. Standing on the fucking front seat, actually. It, exactly. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just got to love that things, playing toys all the time. And um, then when I had to decide where I have to go, like, where should I study? I said, okay, I'm going to study either in, uh, I don't know what it's called, like um, sports university or whatever it's called, because I was doing a lot of sports, or um, design, yeah? because I feel a uh, passion for cars. And my father said, yeah, but isn't it a sport university? Are you an idiot? <laughs> Car design? Are you, are you an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> And then I said, yeah, it looks like I'm an idiot, so I'm going to go that, that, <laughs> that, that way. Yeah. <laughs> but where, where, did the, where did the artistic side come in? I had no idea. Uh, well, my, my, my grandma used to be an, uh, an architect. Yeah. And maybe because of that, because I saw a lot of, um, in fact, like technical drawings. And to me, it was always fun. And in, uh, at school, I, had, uh, I, I attended some classes, and that was not too bad. So um, when I was thinking, oh, what shall I do in life? I thought, mm, I, I quite like, you know, sketching cars. And like everybody, like every car designer would say, I was sketching cars since I was a child doing these uh, really crappy drawings and so on. That's what I did. It was exactly so the same. So you were also doing that, also drawing cars from a young age? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Like, 
Everybody did that. So wow. there's nothing special. But the the, the problem was uh, always was the that um, I was the the sh- the, the worst one. <laughs> yeah. In the in the course in Stroganov, I was the worst one. In Fortsheim, I was the worst one. I couldn't sketch. It was just impossible. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just it, it wasn't there, you know. So what did you do to overcome that? Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, Mark Stephenson. Uh, was the guy who was kicking my butt? Is he the is he the like one of the course directors at Fortsheim? Or he is one of the designers that are coming to Fortsheim. Stephenson? No, Mark. Uh, I know he's Mark. Okay, I, I don't I don't remember his surname okay. too well. We'll, we'll co- is is the is the guy who did the SLS AMG, the A class, and all that class? Oh wow! Okay, and I didn't know it back then. It was a really funny story when he came. I was late. I'm always late. Yeah, yeah. That's my biggest problem. Yeah. And um, yeah, after fourth time, I moved to St. Petersburg, did some work for myself. So we started we started a small company together with a, with a friend of mine, and did some um, livery design for for cars. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I, I dropped my documents to fourth time, and they accepted me. It was like, whoa, cool. And and I was constantly connected to Clemens uh, Osnagel because I did diploma. My first um, degree was with Audi, my second as well. So we stayed in contact. He said, dude, your portfolio is so bad. The only cool project you have is the project you did with me. So (laughs) the rest is really bad. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, no, but what shall I do? He said, yeah, you have to attend uh, one of the two universities. It's uh, it's either in Pasadena or uh, Pforzheim. When I checked the prices in Pasadena, I said, there is only one university I would definitely attend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I checked the RCA, Royal College of Art, and I was really like fancy going there. I told my parents, hey, look, this is London, it's so nice. And they said, yeah, it's nice, who's going to pay for that? <laughs> Crazy expensive. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. And um, then I traveled in 2008, I traveled to Pforzheim to have a look at the degree show, and I still keep in touch with some of the guys who were um, showing up there, like uh, showing their work. And after that, I thought, okay, yeah, why not? <laughs> it was pretty cool. But you, so <clears throat> what I'm interested in is you say that you your, your skills were shit at that stage. Yeah, totally. But how did you get into Pforzheim? Because I know like some very, very talented guys that, could not get in there. Yeah, that's that's. Who I, that's you should ask James Kelly. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you got in there, and what and, and what is it? What is it about that course that helped you? And what sort of things were you? What what there? There must have been certain exercises or classes that. Yeah, they, the the thing is that um, let's say I, I I was a foreigner there. Yeah. Yeah. I was the guy who was. Um, coming here, like to Germany. Yeah. Um, and there was no fallback solution. If I fail, I go back. Yeah. That's it. And then I understood the, the guys that were coming to Stroganov uh, University when uh, from, from other cities because they were pushing like hell because they have to push. And when I came here, I was, I have to say, I was very lucky having really, really strong team um, of, of, of guys yeah, in my group. On top of us, like the the course, um, like older, and after us, okay, all these guys were like, Whoa. so in your so in your level above you and below uh, you, there was sick, everybody. Sick, what time? Ta- what period was this? I graduated in twenty fourteen, okay. twenty twelve, okay. twenty twelve. Yeah, yeah, okay, absolutely sick. People crazy. Environment is fantastic. Yeah, like the energy is fantastic, and <clears throat> because I was late. I didn't know the. I didn't hear the the James Kelly's uh, first speech when he's saying like "Welcome to the family." Huh? I never okay. heard it. I heard it only. Is that what he does? Welcome to the family. <clears throat> yeah, that's what he says. And then okay. that is kind of you know getting goosebumps later. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> the cool thing was that it's it's really like family. And I thought, okay, I'm coming from a tough country. I'm a, from, a, as I thought, a tough university with a lot of problems that you have to solve really quick and so on. <sighs> Pforzheim is the toughest place I've ever been to because you have to push like hell because everybody around you is really skilled. 
and he's like if you if you if you compare it he's like if you're an, a musician they give you the stage they give you the best instruments and they invite proper people you know that could listen to you and if you play really badly there's no chance <laughs> okay and this is where i had to do my first portfolio so i had to do some nice projects not only that we had uh, for studies or during studies but also like side project really difficult but it's it's amazing how you um how you can push the limits yeah you don't have to push it too far you're going to go crazy but if you push the limit 1 mm 2 mm 5 cm it's a lot you know and then and then you start to feel the power and you start to to get hungry you know for that stuff okay and uh, my first meeting with uh, mark with the uh, mercedes designer was really bad i just put my stuff on the wall and i was sketching a lot and i didn't sketch for one year like a lot uh, at all <clears throat> because i was doing my work in st petersburg he came um he came to the, the second floor and he said what the fuck is that that's what he said yeah yeah who the fuck is that i said it's me dude this is really bad. <laughs> you are in the wrong place. You have to go home. And I didn't know who the guy was. And he's, um, uh, sorry, Mark, if you see that. Um, he's really little. Yeah. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy talking to me like this? And then uh, the guys that, and I was, uh, it was my second week there, you know, or first week. And I was like, yeah, who are you talking to me like this? He was like, what? <laughs> Take all this shit down. If next week I wouldn't see a single, at least one page, I'm going to tell James that you have to fuck off. <laughs> I was like, okay. Jesus. It was cool. I mean, I like when it's the, when the situation is tough. This is where you start to wake up, you know? Yeah. And then um, after this, he saw that I was pushing. Well, no, but hold on a second. Explain that moment. So you, you, you go there, you, you take all your stuff down and yeah. you feel like shit. No, I was feeling completely angry. I didn't feel shit. Okay, you're just angry that this guy spoke to you like this. Yeah, and I didn't know who the guy was. And then, um, well, now now he's a really good friend of mine, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the Czech, Czech guy. Yes. He told me, hey, no, who's that? I said, no, hey, he's the Merck designer. You know? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but. So what did you do in that week? Um, the week after. Yes. Yeah, I was pushing like hell. There is no other. So you just went home and you were fucking drawing all day. I never day. went home and we were sleeping in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's a shower there. You don't have to go home. You oh. just go to the shop, buy some something or dinner, kebab. Yeah. It's really nice, I have to say. Okay. The, the, the dinner kebab on the university campus, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Is it good? It's the best. Yeah. I'll check it out if I ever go to part time. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, pushing like hell. That's it. There's no other way. Everybody says you have to push if you're a shitty sketcher, but you still think you're a good designer. Or let's say you have an idea what you have to sketch. The the connection between the brain and the hand has to be correct. Yeah? This connection has to be there. And it was never there. <laughs> and in Pforzheim, let's say Mark behaving like that forced me to to to, to make this link clear. That's it simple as that i'm very thankful uh for that and then the week after he's chosen out of all the stuff i did he's chosen one page he said okay that shit you can put on the wall <sighs> yeah <laughs> that's it and then two 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 pages then five pages then 10 pages and then he said dude i haven't seen a guy but, well he understood maybe that I'm okay when he's swearing or something, yeah? And uh, he was talking to me like to a buddy. And uh, he was, normally he was um, going there for like 40 minutes, uh, once a week, every Tuesday, I think. He was spending one hour with me and 40 minutes with other guys. I don't know why, but he said, I haven't seen that shitty ellipses in my life. Your wheels are as bad as everything you do. So... <laughs> You have to, to, to learn how to do ellipses because the wheels are very important. How the hell are you going to show stents if you don't have wheels? Clear. 
This is the pack of A4 paper, just for one week. If I see that you haven't done all the pack, I'm not gonna spend my time. So ellipses the whole week. Just drawing ellipses. Uh, all the time, in every perspective. Okay, so that's well, uh, that's something that uh, yeah you have to train more and more and more. You have to you have to push. That's that's the only thing. That's what I'm saying. You know, and if you're a lazy ass, it's not gonna have, it's not gonna work. And because there is no other chance, like I don't have. A, I'm coming from a third country. Yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so we're yeah. speaking the same language. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I fail, I fuck off. It's a very simple idea, very clear uh, message. You have to push. That's it. There's no other way. <laughs> so I, I pushed like I, yeah. I, this is, this is a, the more people that I speak to, the more surprising it is to me how um, we all think that, you know, you see, you see these images on, on, online, on uh, Instagram, and uh, you think like, okay, this guy's just got a, they've got a gift and um, there's no ways that anybody else can get there. And the more people that I speak to, the more I hear stories similar to yours where yeah, of they said like, I couldn't do it before i couldn't draw i i i had to work my ass off to to tr it's a it's a it's a, a skill that you learn yeah but it just proves that uh if you think you have a talent you just have to put water constantly yeah you take care of this talent yes. and then it starts to grow of course there are guys like max shershnyov the marussia designer and i don't know what max is doing at the moment but um, he's really famous. His stuff is fantastic. He was studying in Stroganov as well. But super I, quiet though as well. I, yeah, he's really quiet. A uh, blonde haired guy. Yeah. Yeah, I, he interned at Potsdam when I was there. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. He's yeah. really quiet. Crazy uh, talented. Yeah, but well, I, I have no idea how the hell he does that. But then when you start, you know, when you start to push, you realize, okay, the guy is just working a lot. That's it. He loves it and he does it. Simple as that. That's insane. So the 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 drawing classes that you have there are they are you guys doing other stuff? Other you doing other stuff than cars as well? You know, you doing still life uh, drawings as well. Where in Stroganov? No, no, no. Sorry, back in 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 Forza. No, there are no sketching classes. As a master master student, ah, you okay. have to know how to do that. And I missed this part, you know? <laughs> oh, shit. So it was, you were really playing catch up, right? Yeah. Well, uh, well, of course I, I knew how to do that. Yeah. Let's be honest. I was doing the, the 3D back then, like in 3D Max. Um, I think they accepted me because the variety in portfolio was huge. Like okay. helicopters, trains, buses, okay. all that stuff. So it's like really transportation stuff. But sketching skills, which is essential in car design I was the worst okay that's Always. hilarious that's so great and and um your your 3d background did that help you a lot with with your drawing or not really not at all no there's no uh of course i agree you have as a as a designer you have to know the 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 3d skills and you have to go for it and let's say I'm doing Blender stuff at the moment because a friend of mine told me that you can do artistic 3D modeling, yeah? And mm. that's important for me because 3D is, is too dry for me. I, I don't, I, it's like, you know, it's not like making a line, you know? It's like you have to, you make a line and then you start to adjust it and then at this point I start to f fall asleep. You know? Okay. So it's, I have no um, passion for it at all. Not at all. I have to do it, but I have no passion for it. Okay. But it's but what it what it obviously has definitely helped you with surely is is your ability to translate your ideas on paper into a model. Yeah, yeah. When you're working with a modeler, for example. Yeah, yeah, and also, well, talking to to the modeler, let's say the same language, eh? yeah, that the, that the guy and or the girl understands me. That, that's definitely helpful. But again, I have no passion for it. I okay. mean, in Pforzheim, I failed one semester because I couldn't do the interior model. And interior for me is like, 
Wow, what is that? How can I do it? I yeah. have no idea. And and this is what I didn't I didn't like in theory as well. But then luckily we had a second sem- uh, like another semester when I moved to another group, which yeah. was extremely cool as well. Yeah. Uh, I had to learn alias as quick as possible. So I learned it, and luckily we had a boat. We had to design a boat, the interior of a boat. But I cannot imagine designing the interior without the exterior. So we had well, basically the whole group did two things: yeah, interior and exterior. And that's what I loved a lot. So boats are very interesting as well. And okay. that's when I started to do experiments, like we had um, 3D uh, overlapping with watercolor, and the effect was amazing. I was like, whoa. I, I keep on doing that. So it was a bit more artistic rather than super dry and very exact kind of. I think there should be some mystique, you know, in the in the in the presentation that people are like, oh what was that? Can I have a look? Can I have a closer look? Somebody doesn't like it, but most of the people enjoy it. Was everybody doing was everybody trying that or was that just something that you were getting into? No, no, I just color? I just tried it. I was lucky um to meet a guy <clears throat> Um, Jakub Starman is uh, from Czech Republic yeah. and uh, he's a very close friend of mine he's, um, he's a Škoda designer and um, we started to get in one group and he taught me how to do watercolors because I never did that and there was another guy Song Jung Ming Song mm-hmm. from Korea and he also he's a master of watercolors and they started to teach me just randomly so what is the process with that? Do you do you put the watercolor down first and the lines over it, or no? It's, those are two different things. So I think I do watercolors in such an old school way that uh, young or modern people don't like it. Okay, too much. But the old guys like it. So I, I prefer markers and 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 pen. It's, it's more. It's more my taste. I would say. And are you are you using standard uh, markers like Copic and uh, uh, chart pack? Chart pack. I use Letra. Said never use Copic. I never liked Copic. I don't know why. Okay. Um, chart pack because it smells good. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Letra said because on this paper, on the paper that I use, um, it can do really nice highlights, like super sharp. Okay. Even um, your first internship did you say it was at audi or at mercedes i've always been at audi okay. all my life and like uh, design life was was were you surprised when you got in when you got the internship um it was clemens uh who picked me up yeah again and um he gave me an internship in motorsport design yeah and then i realized shit i have to do liveries again because it's motorsport. I wasn't really happy there, but I saw we were sitting together with the exterior designers and I thought, nah, that's real life. <laughs> and then um, I saw a lot of um, disappointment moments, you know, when, when you think, this design is so good. Why it has not been chosen? What the, what's the problem? And then you see that even on the package, it could work, you know? Because you start to understand that things, and then okay, maybe I'm I'm too young to understand it. Well, like maybe there's a proper reason for that. But then you look at the at the chosen design, you think it looks like shit. You know, it really does. And the backup design is way better. What's the problem? And then when I was talking to to the guys, they started to, to tell me, yeah, it's. Uh, politics is everywhere so and then that's where i first met politics and i was like okay maybe it's not like that everywhere ah, it's like that everywhere <laughs> everybody knows it and then you start to deal with that you have to deal with that as a as a designer um also the the i only had one internship in my life unfortunately yeah it was at audi and then i did the second diploma at audi so all my life uh, as a designer was at Audi. And then I, I realized, okay, as a designer, you have to be a very communicative guy. You have to solve a lot of problems. You have to manage a lot of things. Uh, if you got a model or you do the model yourself, you have to inspire the modeler. 
when I go to Clay later on as a designer, you have to find a common language with uh, Clay guys. Luckily, the, the team of Clay guys was fantastic and it was super easy, you know, but sometimes it's not. But That's where you've got to dig deep, huh? Yeah. So. But um, the learning experience in your internship, was that big? Yeah, of course. I mean, first time in life you get in the, in the real studio. For me, it was like, whoa, everything is secret. I see the cars that are going to be on the road in seven years. <sighs> it's exciting. This right? is hot, yeah? Yeah. And then you're talking to different guys and they're like, yeah, yeah, dude, I'm working here since uh, we did the first ET. <sighs> Can I touch you? <laughs> <laughs> that was exciting, of course. But um, I don't want to put too much negative there. Yeah? yeah. But at some point you realize, shit, they're doing the same. All the cars are the same. Why? And then there was a project, this yellow uh, SUV um it was presented at some point uh and uh, and i had um, a, a talk with john lu the guy who was uh working on it he was teaching me a lot as well um like how to deal with different things um it was a different car it was amazing it was looking good was standing good was really powerful and i thought wow this is this, that's what i would like to do but then we had a very cool project in motorsport. We had to, we could touch the R18, the Le Mans car, the 2014 winning car. And this was exciting. You know, even the livery design was exciting. We had to do a CD presentation. We had a lot of work. We had a lot of animation. We were presenting on power walls. First time in life, I saw oh, the power wall. It's like, it's really powerful. It's so big. It's like a wall. It's like a TV, but a wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a TV, but a wall. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it's a super huge. You could see the car in full size. That was an exciting moment. And meeting these um, motorsport guys, He's fantastic. They have a completely different mindset. Back then, it was an uh, they called themselves the Audi uh, Audi family, and that was like this, you know, the the Dr. Ulrich, the bald guy, the old guy, that collected everybody in the um, from from industry. We had engineers from Formula One Ferrari team, you know, and these guys were excited doing our cars, you know. And when you look at at them, you you also have this fire again in in yourself. I was like, what? I want to, I want to do this car. I want to see this car outside. I want to, I want to try to sit in the car. I was I couldn't sit, man. I'm too fat for that. But it was nice. I mean, <sighs> as a as a as a normal person, you cannot get in the LMP car. It's no way. Yeah, you I cannot all, get in. The drivers are all tiny. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I mean, just the person outside cannot do this. Nobody would allow him to sit in. As ah. a as a designer, they say, yeah, yeah, of course, get in. <sighs> Can I drive it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never pay for asking. Yeah, you just ask. So uh, this was uh, this was an exciting moment. We were taping the cars. It was it's super difficult? You know, the, the car is like this. It's an LMP car. It's like a tool. And when you tape it, you are spending days and nights in the garage in motorsport design, or let's say in the motorsport building. <sighs> Very cool. And then you see the result. Well, I just finished the Formula E um, last month, livery. In the first first time in nine months, uh, because of pandemic stuff, I could touch the real car. It was really exciting. Even though it's a livery, which is not my piece of cake, I would say. I was. It's a lot of excitement. Ivan, you you said that you not um, the 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 three D three D for you is. Uh, is 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 boring you do you th that's talking about you building the model yourself i mean is there there's something exciting about seeing a sketch come alive into a physical model is are you talk is is you're not talking about that are you talking about actually playing with alias and curves and yeah, mo moving the, things the, the process is uh, is 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 boring for me okay. ju i just i just want to sleep but when you but 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 are you excited by you know you've got this idea on paper and seeing this yeah, come course. to life yeah yeah definitely of course but if i can do it with somebody else's uh hands it's even better okay <laughs> yeah interesting there's there's a lot of debate around this because um 
you know, there, there are, we've, we've spoken to Alan before, um, yeah. and, uh, and he obviously, you know, he admits that, um, you know, he doesn't build any of his own models and, um, but you know, he definitely understands 3d and he, um, uh, you know, he prepares his idea and he has a clear roadmap to, to execution. And there's a school of thought as well that, um, a lot of the design happens in 3d yeah. and, and, uh, and, and therefore like, you know, you should as a designer be modeling yourself as well. True. Um, uh, I was, uh, well, a bit of a story, yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to get in the team of Raul Pires, the ex exterior chief of Bentley. My chief is uh, is is uh, Dirk van Brackel. Yeah? He was the chief of the whole Bentley design back in the days, and Raul was his uh, exterior chief. And uh, my second year at Audi, I spent the whole year with Raul, and this was the best time ever with the best people ever. Yeah, and the cool thing was that Raul. He's a very old school guy, in a good way. Um, and he said, okay, we have limited budgets, like super limited, but we have to do full-size models. So we have to reduce the costs, so we're not going to hire the, the 3D modelers for a long time. We're going to have them only for one week. And we said, yeah, what the hell are we going to do then? I mean, we cannot do the A-class models that we can put them... For, for milling. He said, no, but you're going to do full-size tape drawings. We're like, what? Cool. So we did this, and it saved a lot of money, and the guys, when they saw the orthogonal views uh, in tape, so we took pictures of that, put it in Photoshop, worked it out a bit. To me, it, it proved that the old-school technique that everybody is getting rid of at the moment, it's so efficient. It's still artistic. It's way more interesting because you have to look with your eye as an artist, not as a designer even, I would say. And to me, I always read these Italian designers' uh, stories. Um, and to me, the car design was very romantic. You know, I was always thinking, shit, these people are doing sculptures, but on wheels. And then they see them moving and the reflections are moving. And then they're standing there looking at what they did. And, and of course, they have a lot of thoughts about what they did. And I want the same. And nowadays, it's not romantic anymore. You see uh, people doing a lot of CAD work. Like at Audi, now everybody's switching to CAD. Clay modelers have to learn CAD. They have to switch to CAD because the process goes fully digital. <sighs> we saw the cars coming from, uh, let's say, Ital Design. Um, after only digital work, we had to redo them by hand. We had to scan them, remodel them, remill them, and then we asked clay guys with our sketches to redo them, and we made them better. And it's... Um, I don't like to focus on one tool because you're getting stuck there and you have to switch to different things. If you don't switch, you get stuck. So if, um, let's say, I am a bit lying that, that 3D is boring because when you go to Blender and you use the grease pen, so you basically model with a tablet, this is getting really exciting again. And then you see that your sketch, like the real sketch, is getting alive. You know, you can rotate it. And this is where, where it's getting interesting. You know, and then that is, that is, well, combining different tools and skills, this is where you get something special. If you keep on doing Elias as a designer all your life, it's getting dry and dry and, and even more dry, and then it's getting boring, and then you start to get disappointed because you're getting stuck. You know, you get to the limit of your, I don't know, development of your skill in, in CAD, in sketching, in drawing, in whatever, but you never get stuck if you switch Okay, it's getting boring. I take a pencil. With a pencil, it's a different flow. Okay, the, this paper doesn't work. I take another paper. Wow, this paper has a different feeling, entirely different. And then I can use the pencil in a different fashion again. 
and uh, and uh, Lina and Bullpen and Marker. Even the kids' uh, markers, you know, these small things. If you use them on a different paper, the result it can be fantastic. You know, people are sketching with coffee. <sighs> you can do anything. There is a guy in uh, Stiglitz Academy. Shit, man, he's doing fantastic applications. What I mean is, I don't know what is it, uh, the word in English, when you cut out things and you place them together. Oh, uh, collage. Collage, you know. Yes. The, exactly. But he's taking his old artworks that he did with gouache, cuts the pieces out. Ah, oh, I've seen this. Yes. Yeah. He, he did like this Paul Smith mini, right? Yeah, I already bought it. Eh? <laughs> ah, did you really? Yeah. I, yeah, no, it's mega. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very cool. That's the fucking cool idea. Yeah. Who did that? Yeah. I haven't heard of anybody doing that stuff. Yeah. You know, and he's what I, what is exciting me as well is that because is that he's one of my students. I was teaching them during the pandemic times online. Yeah. And then this guy is uh, writing me, "Hey dude, I came up with an idea." And then he's burning something and then the, with coal, like the real coal. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Shit, this is cool. You know, and that is very romantic as well. And yeah. if you use this kind of skill in design, that can be very interesting. And that's the really old school stuff. It's 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 fascinating seeing what's 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 come about now because, you know, you, you we when when I was getting into it, I felt that that there was like a very specific way that things need to be done. I know that there were some companies. I'm not going to mention them that were very particular about the way that you did a rendering it needs to be a certain it needs very to exact. be like like the, very exact and it not only it needs to be very exact it needs to be in the same color it needs to be in the same style so all the fucking sketches look the same but you can distinguish perfectly who's uh yeah, yeah. sorry the different themes but now you're seeing this evolution and not only an evolution but an acceptance of people doing a completely different and abstract styles. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. This year has proven that you can be artistic in design again, yeah? And people start to appreciate it again. And um, the guy in Audi I, um, told me, the guy who was uh, who is uh, responsible for ordering some I don't know, pens, markers, and everything, I said, hey, Max, we need, uh, I need new pens because there is a project coming, and I start with uh, with a hand. He said, "Dude, I'm officially telling you, you are the only person who is uh, using pens these days. Use a tablet." I said, "No, a pen, please." <laughs> and um, now it's not like that. I know guys that are doing a lot of hand sketches again, and I'm really happy about that. You know, uh, 3D get, is getting artistic. You know, it's, uh, it's well. It's all, it, we're also seeing Blender in studios now, which is super interesting. Yeah, absolutely, and one of my good friends is doing that. He's working with Alberto Mielgo, you know, this uh, Spanish uh, artist who is doing a lot of things for like Spider-Man uh, movie, okay. and, and he's sketching everything. He's a crazy guy, and a friend of mine. He's a super young guy. Yeah, he's twenty-four, and he he was teaching me a lot of things. I'm thirty-two. And we were talking, I um, I tried to manage his internship at Audi. Luckily, it worked. He impressed everyone with his artistic skills. And then he did diploma there. And he impressed everybody even more with his artistic skills, with 3D artistic skills. And that's when I was like, okay, Georges, we have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, even the, one of the things I haven't really been able to speak to yet because I haven't spoken to any Russian designers in person is, um, do you think there's a thing as Russian car design? Do you think there's a specific style that that's come out of Russia? It was like that. I think it, it's not like that anymore. Okay. How, do, how, do, how do you, how do you mean that there was well, at some point, there was a generation like, uh, it still is, uh, like Ernest, Sasha, Misha Klimov, Sasha Selipanov, I mean, uh, Misha Klimov, um, Artyom Niretin, some other guys, I'm sorry if I don't mention someone, 
but uh, very powerful guys. Anton Shamenkov. I, 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 my description of it would be power. Like there is a, there's a real, there seems to be a sense of strength in these yeah, sketches. Yeah, but if you talk to any of them, I haven't spoken with, with uh, Artyom ever in my life. I never met him. But once you speak to to these guys, you can feel the that you know the 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 smell of power somehow. Or let's say, when they enter or they start speaking to you, they are a little bit pushing. You know? Yeah. But Anton Shaminkov is different. He's very gentle. Ernest yes. is very smooth. Yes. He's very very gentle as well. But the power they have inside, you can see it on the paper. Yeah, because there's a certain there's a certain quality to it. There's yeah, there is a certain quality. There is a certain let's say solidity. The the sketches and the ideas very are constructed. Yeah, yeah, they're very solid. But again, you have to understand that I don't know how what uh, how everything works in Mummy. Yeah, I never studied in Mummy, but um, in Stroganov, it's a school of constructivism. Ah, interesting. I mean. The funny thing is, I, I didn't know that, but now I know that um, my teacher of academical drawing was a student of Kandinsky. No. So the link is very clear, you know? And this mindset is, you just getting it somehow. And that's what's happening. I mean, constructivism was part of the, of the big idea back then. And then you see a lot of buildings that are constructed basically what's really interesting about that specific style is that it doesn't mean that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's stiff but it's definitely like you for me as a as a 3d person reading those sketches it's it, it kind of almost maps out what you would do with the volumes yeah. when you create it so it's really useful from that from that perspective from that respect but when you if you haven't seen it and you described what you've just described now, you would feel that it's, you would think that it's really stiff, but no. it's anything but that. It's uh, some of it's really, really sensual, but there's a, a real, um, there was, I, I think I th uh, there was a, a quote that, that uh, Ian Callum said, I can't remember the whole thing, but one of the, uh, one of the um, key things that he said, good design needs to be is it needs to be constructed. So you don't have this melting bar of soap. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've yeah. got you've got some tension in it. it. And it has to be clear. And yeah. it needs to be clear. But it also needs to be well thought through. And you cannot you, you you have to sketch it to think through, you know? You have to once you understand it on the paper, as you said, it's really easy to build it in C A D. So you don't have to rush getting into C A D. That's And my then you've point. got a roadmap to Exactly. Refer to. And then if you look at the cars, like a good example of, of modern cars is Cinquecento. This car stand, was standing three generations of new Mini and new Cinquecento because the design is so cool. That's a, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, but like three generations of Mini and one Cinquecento and it's still competing with the, mo, mo, the, the newest Mini was before they now introduced the new one. I mean, you never change Rolls Royce in six years. It's a different, you know, client. But Cinquecento, they're really good in color and trim. I mean, I Italians. But the design, the core design is the same. But it just means that it was well thought through. It was, they spent time thinking, thinking on it or about it. And it was well constructed. That's it. I think it was the same designer who did the new mini and then the Cinco Chin. I'm not sure. I, don't, I, I have no idea. But fascinating. This is, I think, that's important that you spend time thinking. This is what, this is what uh, is lacking nowadays. Everybody's in a rush. We have one week of sketching, or one month of sketching. Then we select. And then go directly in CAD. Okay? <laughs> but then let's spend a bit of time in clay. There is no time. This is what is lacking. The, the 
Can you name a single car that could be, I mean, you're asking me questions, but <laughs> can you name a single car uh, that can be a, a future classics from today on? Cybertruck. Oof. Is it already in production? No, but Elon Musk will bring it into production. He's well, South African. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> um, your, let's talk about your side project. Mm. The thing that you are most well known for, actually, sell Porsche to buy Porsche. Okay. Um, I had seen your stuff online for a while, and it actually wasn't until I spoke to Florian that uh, um, I made the connection, and then you reached out, and we finally got to yeah. to do this today. But I, yeah, I said to you already that the thing. The sketches that you do for that project is they are. It's it's testament to the to to the design of the nine eleven as well because because of the the, the timelessness of it. Mm. But you see it illustrated the way you do it, and it's as if it could have been done. It's as if it could have been designed today. But there's a real artistic expressiveness that um, is 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 very interesting. Well, first of all, I would say I never liked Porsche. No? No, I was thinking, shit, what a boring car. You know, they're all the same. First gen, the F, the G, the uh, 9 and uh, 993. Like, come on, not even changing a door, really? And then I was like, okay, maybe I should at least sketch a silhouette of it. Nah, no way, you're not going to do it in the first go. <laughs> it's impossible. You have to know how to do it. It's super difficult. Because then you look at your sketch and you think, yeah, I sketched it well, but something is wrong. <laughs> and then you start to think. And then when you when you just do the side view, you're already like one week is gone and you still don't have a single sketch <laughs> because it's so difficult. And then when it, when it's difficult, it's getting interesting. And then you start to rotate it like on the paper. <sighs> very difficult how the hell they kept this shape for such a long time and it looks so fresh still and then I started to like it because I, I started to understand it I didn't understand it you have to understand it to, to like it somehow what is sell Porsche to buy Porsche all about uh oof. It's an interesting, uh, let's say, thing. Um, I'm 32. Two years ago, for my 30th birthday, I wanted to buy a G Targa, particularly in Los Angeles, and travel from Los Angeles to New York with that car. That was the main idea, like either with my wife or with my kids, but the kids are too little still to do that. But then I thought, okay, it's a bit, it's a bit too easy, you know, just to pay, have it, drive it. It's, it's not interesting. So I bought a Mini, <laughs> the classic Mini. But the Porsche um, idea came um, kind of essentially. I thought, okay, it's an interesting challenge. If I would sketch Porsches, I would, I would because I started to like Porsches, and that would be interesting if I only sell Porsche sketches, or let's say illustrations, and uh, earning money from that, I would get a car. That would uh, that would show my kids that if you have a dream and you convert it into a goal, everything starts to change. Because then you can achieve the goal, but you cannot achieve the dream. That's that's the mindset. And then I started doing this. So sorry, just just explain quickly. You've got this Instagram account called Sell Porsche to Buy Porsche. Okay. So it does what it says on the tin. You make yeah. drawings and illustrations of Porsches, yeah. you sell them, and you're working towards the goal of getting a certain amount of money to buy a Porsche. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but at some point I realized, uh, we had a talk with George Varodi. Yeah? He's the guy from St. Petersburg, an artist and a designer um, who is now getting a job in one company in, in France. But mainly he's a, he's a digital designer, a uh, digital artist. 
And he said, he saw my stuff. He said, yeah, why, why, why wouldn't you start the Instagram page? I said, yeah, I don't know. It's not good enough. I don't think people would appreciate it because nah, I don't feel you know comfortable. He said, oh, I, I do this for you. So he started it. <laughs> and he said, yeah, post something. So I started to post. Back then, Flo already had his uh, idea of leaving uh, the company he was working for. And he said, yeah, push, push, push. It's interesting. Sorry, sorry. how long ago was this now? When, w- what time was this? Two years ago. Two years ago. Well, okay. Less than two years So ago. 2018. Kind of, yeah. And then, yeah, um, I thought it's an interesting idea. It's a very clear message in the name of the of the account. But I thought it's not powerful enough. So, and and back then I realized, I, well, I got I got the, the information that oh, I started to, to know that um, there is a bit of a link with uh, Kandinsky. And he used to live in München. And I started to visit the places where he used to live, uh, excursions and so on and so on. And then I thought, shit, I need a community of people, you know, doing that stuff, doing the car stuff, but artistically. So I was talking to Flo to a few uh, photographers and uh, because i like motorhead um there's a song uh, we are the road crew yeah ah okay so that okay all right uh, that's yeah. the second account eh? okay. <laughs> so there is a there is a second account called we are the road crew yeah okay i need to check that out oh it's, there are only three pictures there still uh, so okay all right it's a bit dead okay but um then i w- we had a talk with um uh, sebastian toddy the um, we did a skateboard with him. He, he's not. The, uh, he's the, he's the Ford uh, designer. asphalt guy. Yes? Yeah, asphalt culture. Okay. And this is how I started to get to know people, and I I was talking to them. And so you didn't know Sebastian at all before you no, reached. Okay. No, all 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 of these contacts happened when I started the sell Porsche thing. Mega. And because of the, um, because I I want to connect. Uh, let's say unique and I would say not very well known um, artists around that stuff, around the the car stuff, the car community. Um, It's even more interesting because I start to motivate people. Let's say when we had a talk with Flo Weber, uh, we were sitting in uh, in Stuttgart in, in the cafe and he was showing me his stuff and I was showing him my stuff and I said, hey, let's do a 3D sketch. I was like, yeah, what, what's the 3D sketch? Say, yeah, I would do the orthogonal views of the Moby Dicks and you're going to print it on your paper legend thing. I was like, whoa, let's do that. Oh. <laughs> so the idea came randomly and he did it super quick. I mean, I did the sketches, he did the, the, all the preparations. He uh, In CAD, he printed out, built everything and that's it. Here we go. So there was not much of, of a discussion here. We just... It worked, and the same the same uh, thing worked with uh, Asphalt Kultur. We had a, a lot of talks in his uh, place here in München, and and he said, "Yeah, let's do a skateboard together," because he was doing skateboards with uh, with his artworks on them. Um, and then this is this is the road crew. Huh? I'm not pushing that we have to go everywhere together, but the main idea is if there is any exhibition. For one guy, he can always say, hey, I have two other people that uh, they could, well, be cool in this format of this exhibition. And then he calls us or whatever he wants to, to see there. He said, yeah, the, the whole crew is going to be in our next exhibition showing up um, in different places. Yeah. It's like helping each other with, let's say, the same idea in the he- in head. Yeah. And then I thought, ah. It's cool, but it's not enough. And I was uh, scrolling through Instagram, and there is a magazine which is called The Road Rat. Yeah, I follow them. And I read it, The Road Art. I was like, oh, shit, that's the thing. There is a street art, but there is no road art. Okay. So I put my stuff. The first sketch I put in the mountains uh, is on the way to Zamnaun on a small curvy road. I had to climb the 20-something meter mountain rock and i i printed the full size 911 rear end and i put it there don't put me in jail please uh, and i put it there with a the glue so it's like it's it's it can go there and it's still there wow 
That's called the road art. And it's on there. It's on there. Is it, there's a picture of it on the account, yes? No. Oh, so, okay. What account? What, okay. What picture? Okay. <laughs> Listen, you've brought some of your stuff with. Can we have a look at it, please? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then we need some. Oh, that thing. That not. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. And that's for the students. We did this online. So I sketched with them. Um, don't remember the, the, the task. Yeah. You want that as well? Yes. There it is. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is for the guy. Um, this project never happened. Uh, up, up. This project never happened. Yeah. We um, we had a talk with a guy. He found me through Instagram. And I was going back from uh, Luxembourg, passing by Stuttgart. And he has this car. But it's it's the wrong color. But it's it's much brighter, the green. And he said, yeah, hey, let's meet up in the evening. And I give you a ride. You know there is this old uh, racetrack in uh, in uh, through the woods in, uh, in next to Stuttgart, uh, with a beer garden next to it. Okay. I don't remember the name. I'm really bad with names. And uh, he said, "I'm going to give you a ride in my turbo," and I never had a chance to drive, uh, or let's say, as a co-driver um, in a turbo. But I know there is a turbo lag. I I sat in the car, fastened the seat belt. Seat, uh, seat belt. He said, "Okay, if you are scared." Just tell me. And so he started to push. There's no lag. So the car is moving re relatively slow. 4,000 RPM, four and a half, five thousand. 5,000. I was like, Ugh. and then it came, yeah? So it was like, Poof. and then he was driving first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. And I look at the speedo, it's like 200 through the woods. And he's like <laughs> overcoming cars. And I said, Dude, why not in a race? He said, ah, shitting your pants. Not yet, but, uh, well, you know. <laughs> Almost, yes. So, you know, these things, they're just, um, I meet people because of that. These these sketches that, you, that you've done here, are, is this kind of like a, this is not the thing that you sell. The, is this an idea saying this is what it could look like and then you do a big version I never of sell it. originals. Let's say there was not a person who could offer me enough that I could just cut it out and sell it. I have a different idea for these sketchbooks. Okay. It would pop up later. I, I, so, I, what, I so what exactly are you, are you selling? Would you normally sell a print of that? Yeah. Okay. A1, A2. Okay. Um, we did some full-size sketches with Floor. Yes. The Orange 911 yes. from Stefan Bogner, the Curves Magazine guy. <sighs> Uh, these sketches are in another book, but this is the uh, this this was the fantastic uh, car to okay. sketch. This thing is uh, is for the guy in uh, Chicago. Okay, we did a project with him. Yeah. Also, he found me through Instagram. He said, "Dude, I want I want to support your idea because you're not uh, asking for money. You're doing some cool stuff." Oh, so, look at that! So uh, he has the nine four four. I which, love the nine four four, which I never liked. And once I started to sketch it, I thought, shit, it's a cool car. I almost bought it. But I thought, hey, the first Porsche 944, I don't want the first Porsche. Uh, no, you need, oh, I want the, 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 with the flat front. And No, I just want the first Porsche would be a 911. Oh, for you. Okay. Yeah. All right. But um, when I started to, to explore it, this is when you get the understanding of, okay, this is the cool car as well, you know? So you are doing different perspectives. You're starting to enjoy it and you start to understand it, you know, and then. Oh, Jesus, Ivan, look at that. <laughs> Jesus, Ivan, hello. Jesus, Ivan. <laughs> Is that all in frame? Look at that. My God. So that's the. What the so what is the process of that? Are you putting, are you, are you sketching first and marker afterwards or marker first? Always different. Always different. I tried the marker first. I can show you the orange Porsche from, uh, from Stefan. Yeah. Um, well, it's always different, dude. This would make me excited to draw again, <laughs> really. No, honestly, that's cool. If that would make you sketch again, I wouldn't mind it. Look at that, mother of Jesus! <laughs> so, um, the colors that's what I'm talking about. I always thought that the colors is really difficult, never sketched with colors, 
And then uh, when I when I thought that I'm already not bad in um, grayscale things, then I tried to put some colors on. And then it started to work so well with colors mixing up. And, and on this paper, this is a super nice paper. What what paper is it? Uh, it's Leuchtturm. Leuchtturm. Yeah. Class, do you know what that is? Leuchtturm uh, 1917. It's a, okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a very old school uh, brand. Okay. But let's say, you <gasps> see, they're all different. Uh, I mean, on this page, this is the best one yeah, out of all. That's so fucking cool. Because it's the smallest. And you have to, yeah, you have to think, the, 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 there were a lot of problems doing the composition first, of course. So a lot of things didn't match, you know, the, the paper. And then you start to combine cars, then you start to learn the cars, then I started to learn the names of the cars, so now I'm a bit... We had a meet, we, we met with Magnus Walker one, uh, one day in Stuttgart, and he said, hey, dude, what Porsche you own? I said, I, I have all of them. I, what? What do you mean? Yeah, all of them. I, they're all in my sketchbook. <laughs> um, this is a very cool oh, thing. Oh, the oil stain car. Yes. We had a talk with uh, with Nikita in in Ilya, and um, I don't remember. But one of them, I told them about my idea for the for the road crew and <gasps> and 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 this art stuff, and they said, "Dude, it would be nice if we would be part of it." I said, <laughs> "Yeah, of course," <laughs> because what they do is is absolutely sick. They're like, they are, but they. are crazy crazy talented those guys yeah both of them i remember seeing their their like i don't know there was a it was a bus that uh i nikita is that what his name is nikki nikita nikita his i i don't know what his brother's name is but i've seen Ilya. so i've seen sketches of nikki the the it was just it was a fucking camper van but the the style and the expressiveness and dude this is going back I, at least eight, no, more, more than well, probably ten years ago. Very cool shit. Very, of, very cool. One of them, the, the coolest thing about these guys is that they are thinkers and they are dreamers. But and they fucking execute though as well. Yeah, but you remember the Bugatti project? What if Jean Bugatti was alive? Yeah. It, this is not the Pfotzheim project. This is the guy who copied the stuff. The essentially the the first idea came from i don't sorry guys i don't remember from whom Ilya or nikita but i was studying in stroganov back then and when i saw the stuff i was like fuck in one semester five or seven cars how many cars you did he did the whole story from what if jean bugatti was alive and he was um the soviet union i think bought the 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 bugatti or they had a uh, some connection and he made renderings like the historical photographs. He created the whole idea and the whole path through history till nowadays and to the future. And when I saw that stuff, I thought, shit, that's the benchmark that you have to, the most important thing in, in designing things, you have to think about how you do that. And to me, this was super crazy. Where did they, they but they studied in Pasadena, right? Yeah. Okay. But, he but they, are, uh, they are Russians or not? No. Oh, no. okay. No. I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't know why I thought I don't that. think so. Okay. I'm pretty sure they're not. Okay. But by chance, by, by just studying this cell Porsche thing, uh, we started to talk. Because I, I, I love this dropped alpha from, I think it's Nikita's car. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I, yeah. I mess up uh, all, yeah. all, uh, everything. But um, that's what this talk show is all about. It's just perpetually messing up and <laughs> fucking up and <laughs> not being perfect. So don't worry. So this one. Oh, um, my God. This one w is meant to be <gasps> uh, as a project with the Asphalt Kultur again. Oh. So and this is last year's stuff. So it's not the fresh. It's, uh, it's exactly one year ago, October 2019. So the, the newest stuff I cannot show. <laughs> Pretty cool that that class. Even class is getting excited. He doesn't get excited for anything. These, yeah. I can tell you about these. No, I mean, yeah. 
So that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give it. it always depends. It always depends on how much time I spend on the on on work. But that is priceless. That is not for sale. That book over there, not yet, not yet. So this is I I tell you later. Oh. This is the this is the Moby Dick we did with Flo. Oh no! This is the top view orthogonal top view. So dude, you know, huh? That's the one that yeah, that's the one that Flo. That's the one that Flo brought. On, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is the just the orthogonal view that he projected. Um. And there is a side view as well. But we also did the, the full-size Moby Dick, you know? This one was uh, projected on the side. And that's how the 3D sketch uh, was born. Pretty simple. And then we had a meeting with like a Porsche Lebanon friends that uh, Seba uh, Asphalt Kultur was organizing together with other guys. Yeah. And uh, we already showed our, um, well, let's say, my 911, uh, no, I call it no 11 because it's a paper car. Yeah. <laughs> um, I said, let's do the full-size Moby Dick. Who else has a Moby Dick on a Porsche meeting? It's impossible to get it. <laughs> and what we did, we cut out the windows here so you could sit inside the sketch. So we put the, the small, <laughs> we put the small chair behind it and people were like, Look, I'm in the Moby Dick. Uh, okay. <laughs> Where is that thing now? Does does flow uh, this thing? No, the, uh, yeah, the, the, the full, full size. size. Yeah, uh, I think it's in some barn uh, at the place where we. Yeah, this is the Britain Brothers no, uh, 911 RS replica. This car inspired me a lot for you know having the 911 as well. So and it's just trying out the different technique. You see, I, I can also sketch with the correction pen. It's just an experiment. Fuck you, Ivan. <laughs> Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is the the other side view of the paper legend, the the black and white. And this is again the. Half eleven. Oh um, wow! Half. Look at that. So, so dude, this they they are they are twins, twin brothers in America that are building the this car, the real car, the real car. It's oh, it's insane. Yeah, this one was selling the best, I would say, last year. Oh wow! Look at that. So it, it's not symmetrical. It's not like ideal, but. You know, somehow people really like these kind of things. You know why this happening? You just have to try out the marker. Yeah. You know, you open it. Chick, chick, chick. Oh shit! That's not. But even you, you, so you, but you are planning the composition out on that page over there as well, or no? You, well, you can see it's not planned because it's uh, it's moved down too much. Okay. But I would. I that's yeah. I wouldn't have even noticed that. Look at that! Look at that! But it's all last year. So this year, I hope I got better. So, and also that's, um, that's how you learn the shape of the car. Yeah? You have to do sections. Yes. Um, that sort of section is class. I've learned something. Yeah. So with a section, you understand it better. And then you sketch it easier. So at some point, you just don't, you don't pay too much attention to the, Let's say I can sketch a 911 without looking at anything. So I can just sketch. Okay, it. we've got paper here. Oh, Don't shit. worry. <laughs> so 964, huh? Yeah. Well, this one was the first. Um, this one was the first kind this, in this book. So it's not as good. Um, also, with this book is a nice story because. I found this one um, in internet, ordered it just to, to try the paper. And it was almost finished. And I um, I had a talk with uh, Stevie Fabeka. Stevie is now the chief designer of uh, Chinese studio of Audi. And he said, dude, what is that? I explained him everything. He said, I need to introduce you to, to Stefan Bogner. The curves make it. Where is he? Is he in Munich? Stevie? Yeah. No, he's in China. Beijing. No, 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 no. The Curse Magazine guy. 
Yeah, he's Munchen based. Okay. And um, is he a cool guy? Oh, he's awesome. Is he? Yeah, he's. Is he a designer as well? No, he's a photographer. He's coming from family Bogner. You know the brand Bogner? Yeah. He's Bogner. Okay. But he's not the, the Bogner that is doing the the, the Clothes. He's the guy who's working with Porsche for really a lot of years and doing, uh, he's a photographer, doing a lot of uh, photography for Porsche and for himself. And he's doing a lot of nice uh, drives and um, let's say collecting roads and then he's sharing them through his uh, books. Maybe we need to get them on. Well, I can connect you. Awesome. So Mr. Bogner, we'd like to have you on. This was the project for him. So he, the, well, the the idea here was to make the car look, let's say, from this angle, or let's say on the on the photo on the photo, you can see that the car is almost uh, popping out from the page. Yeah. So and the perspective is different, and but uh, I think it was one of the cars when I started to do some crazy perspectives and uh, experimenting with the colors, different markers. This this uh, this is the first book. And with Stevie, he saw that uh, the book is over. And he said, hey, I have the same one. I'm never using it. So when do you have a birthday? <laughs> I said, yeah, last week. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> and he wow. gave me that one. So with this with this car, it was uh, very interesting to, to do it because... The, uh, 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 even a bit to the left, yeah. This is where I realized that orange and pink work together but dude that like when i think when i think about your stuff that that's the first thing that pops into my head is the orange and pink and yeah. you would normally think that that those two things kind of contrast and fight with each other but this is a beautiful yeah it does work everything is working so no man dude i i'm a 9-11 guy i fucking love 9-11s and i that's it's just absolute pleasure to be able to see this. Shit. A friend of mine told me, "Hey, Ivan, why do you want this 911? Everybody has the 911." Tell him to shut up. Uh, no, no. I asked him. I said, "Flo, uh, Flo Dobe, yeah." I said, "Hey, Flo, oh, he's coming today." Yeah. I said, "I said, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah." I yeah. want to stay with him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you could come back. He, he's uh, Flo. What flows flows on later? Yeah. But I said, Flo, do you have a 911? <sighs> no. I said, Yeah, me neither. So not everybody. So. <laughs> Sorry, mate. And this is where I just started doing the, the marker first and then some highlights. So this one was, and this one was just the marker first. And then I started to highlight the, the shape a bit. But imagine this one, like big. This is where it pops out. I mean, it's okay. It looks okay on, on, on in this size. But if you look at it when it's big, this is when it's. Really Ivan, I'm going to ask you a quick question, right? Yeah. So you. Oh my God. Okay. My. Um, <laughs> you, you, uh, so, so you had this. You started this. The Instagram account started. What was the first, the first thing that you sold? And, and how did that work? So you did a sketch, you blew it up, and you put it online and, and said, this is for sale. Please. Now, how did that work? Uh, I started to post every day. <clears throat> Obviously, a lot of mistakes. So in one post, I, I did three different sketches. And of course, nobody was scrolling, like moving to the left. So half of them, nobody saw. <laughs> and then I did, I don't know how many, 30, 40 um, posts. And Stevie, uh, Stevie saw it, Fabeka, the Chinese chief. And he said, oh, you need to talk to Stefan Bogner. And, and Stefan called me Sunday morning, nine o'clock. And I was like, oh, what? Who are you? Yeah, Ivan, Stevie told me that uh, you can pop up now to my studio. I said, no, it's nine. He said, okay, 10, 10 in the morning, I'm waiting for you. No. Okay. Four hours we were talking, stopless. <laughs> I came topless. Well, I wish Without your shirt. I wish topless, but not me <laughs> and not Stefan. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so we, we, we were constantly talking for like four hours or more. 
and he gave me um so many cool books so I went out from his place like like this carrying carrying books about cars abart porsche uh, 959 and it's a collectible book i was like ooh cool and then um we met up again and he said i want to do the stuff uh, i want your stuff in the 904 book officially official porsche book so this is how we started to work with stefan and then he said okay i like the stuff you did so can you do me a favor and do a project for me so this is the orange car and then uh he invited me for the um, for the mountain run so what the project that you did with him what was that a it, big print or no it was the it, um, illustrations for the porsche book no but after that this orange car yeah the orange car yeah i only gave him or well, let's say he um took pictures of them uh, in in high resolution i don't know if he printed something or not okay so he he wanted to print them but i always ask you know people who with whom i did some work if i can sell the stuff because some people would say no this is my stuff i paid for it and he said yeah yeah you can do whatever you want so this car the this this no 11 is is this car so this is the full size this was the full size 911 sketch we i i i made it super huge like full size car changed the wheels because these these wheels are shit and uh on the onassis event we also did the the whole background full size like two and a half meters high seven meters long so this sketch was can i, just, can I look at it quickly and just yeah Oh, is it? sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, there. So you blew that little thing up full size. Yeah. Amazing. Then, yeah, and of course, I always start with orthogonal views. You cannot do the car like different perspectives without orthogonal view so lots of them and his uh, logo is ace of spades so you can see them somewhere sometimes at some point <laughs> yeah then different different pens different uh, colors different everything so it's it's not a big awesome it's not a big deal to to do that the big deal is to combine colors you know oh look at that this is the this is one of my favorite pages i have to say on the print i don't have this print anymore they were all sold out super quick how many prints of that did you do um this was the first time i printed something and we did experimental things we experimented with i think 20 different types of paper ink printers so there was not the amount we never counted the amount because some of them went to trash and the ones that survived they were the best and um we saved the let's say the settings so i think there were five of these five print how big are the prints um a2 and would how much would you sell a print like that for um if you don't want to say on camera, that's also okay. No, I don't want to say because okay. um, it's always it, it always depends, you know. On, okay, do you, on, on do different you, things? Would you say how much those prints sold for or not? No. Okay. And of course, there are a lot of fuck ups. Yeah, you don't want to show these <laughs> sausages. Uh, okay, not well. So, and yeah, this was the first. Uh, Look at that! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's that? An E-type? Yeah. Look at that. Green. One for the Jag boys. Green Italy. Look at that. Awesome. So also here, like you see the technique is a bit different. So uh, I was just using the, the pen constantly without taking it off. So this is why it's a bit roundy. Okay. But it's always a matter of experiment, like a bit of a tape drawing. Like it's not a tape drawing, but it's a bit of a tape. Yeah. Two different papers. 
So it's always and this paper allows you to sketch on both sides. So and and uh, sometimes there is uh, there's a random let's say the effect here is pretty cool because on the other side it's is different. You see? Jesus. And um, the other cool thing you learn a lot when you do this. And uh, the cool thing I've learned that if the sketch is really nice being small, it's bloody hell nice when it's being big, when you blow it up. That's also very, that's fascinating. That is really fascinating. Because we, when, when, at university, they, t they, they told us always the other way around. They were like, get, get, uh, if you draw big and you shrink it down, the, like, the compression will make the sketch look better. But I've seen this once or twice, and it's the results are mind blowing. If you learning learning thing, if you use the sketch like this and put it in between other sketches, you're gonna fuck it up. It becomes dirty. Ah, uh, okay. So what do you what do you put? Do you put stuff in between the pages? Yeah. All the time. What? Just just another just, piece of just paper. Just a marker marker paper. Okay. Ah, this is the nine oh four. There is a nine oh four in this book. There is a nine oh four in this book. Brilliant. It's the hardest car I've ever sketched. If you do it wrong, it's a Datsun in the front. If you do it wrong in the rear, it's a Ferrari. It's uh, these are the first sketches. Okay, Look, but you want to show them? They are really bad, you know? The first were really bad. It took me, I think, a month to achieve a nice result. These are really bad. But then they were getting better. This it, this this book is very um, random, you know? So it, it has a lot of unlinked paper, um, sketches. That's also a cool page. Yeah. Awesome. I think this was also sold out pretty quick. So how is your target going? Uh, slowly. Okay. But a lot of people tell me, hey, Ivan, you have to hurry up. You know, this, color, this is my favorite, this one, these two. You know, the cars are getting expensive. You have to buy the car as soon as possible. But to be honest, you know, I, I, I started to collect this um, Argruppe book, uh, the, the Type 7 book, and getting to know people that are um, into Porsches. I know now uh, the owners of few museums with classic cars just because of that. Uh, some uh, workshop yeah. guys with uh, expensive fancy cars. Yeah, this is where it was getting better, you know. And this is where you see a Ferrari. Oh, uh, okay. So it's not a 904. It's a Ferrari. Wow. Because it's really hard to sketch it. And then it was getting better. This is the 904. Fuck. And better and better. And then finally, I don't have these sketches here, but I did this the side view. That was really good. The side view was... There's really a 914 there, huh? 914. Yeah, nine one four one four nine one four. Yeah, it's my bad accent and my inability to articulate <laughs> myself. <laughs> yeah, this one I did for Stevie, let's say, because he he was uh, about to buy this car, I think. Oh, but um, I didn't like it too much. But it's also twenty nineteen, so this is twenty nineteen, and this is twenty nineteen. So, and you can see the the progression was was uh, was okay. So. It's not an ugly car. This is a fantastic car. Black on black. Oh, look at that. This is the car from Flo Flatow. Hello, Flo. <laughs> Flatow, uh, the designer. Yeah. Flo, um, is he, he's also Munich based, is he? No, he's no? in California now. Okay. He did this lucid air uh, interior, I think. Okay. Maybe exterior, I don't know. I think interior. No, he didn't do the exterior. I think interior. He used to work at Audi as an interior designer. Also a cool guy. 
Yeah, there we go. And this is this oh, is when Oh, look at that. This is when you know the kind of magic happened. Oh, that is magic. Particularly here. Because if you look, a very simple thing. This was the first line. You see this small one? Yes. And that's a Ferrari. <laughs> and that's a 904. Wow. And that's the magic of uh, no line design. Yeah. The car doesn't have a single line, just this bottom thing. That's it. Just shut lines. And uh, a lot of photographs that I found, the car is matte, no reflections. So we have no idea how the shape works. <laughs> so this is a difficult car. But when you when you feel it, it's a good it's a good feeling. So this is when um, this is one of the last pages that uh, that I really was like I didn't fuck up the project because I was really thinking shit it doesn't happen it doesn't work you know and then I started doing perspectives different perspectives this is a hard perspective there is no line this guy has no lines difficult so ah this is one of my favorite nobody wants to buy it why this is one of my favorite and in a printout i can show you the the print i think it's here in 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 the printed version it's way more juicy is one of my favorite. Don't know why people. Maybe just uh, how how long are you spending in Photoshop, like uh, enhancing it before you print it? Uh, I'm not doing much in Photoshop, no? to be honest. Uh, maybe just adjusting the um, what is it aspect ratio. Yeah, a bit of. Um, it depends on the printer. Okay. So now I know what I need to do for our printer. Okay. So. Yeah, well, there are there are a lot of things here, so we could spend the whole day. Yeah, but um, details, minis. Ah, this one is in the is in is in the road art stuff. Wow, this is the full. This was the full size. Cool. Rear end. Do you have a store? Do you have an online store or not? So how does it work? Somebody has to contact you. I realized that. Um. Yeah, I have to do the store. I have to do now. I I just send the Freiberufler uh, yeah. application, so that would be taxed and everything. But the most interesting thing to me is to work with people on the project of the car, which means minimum two weeks of work. And it depends on what they want. If they want the printouts, this is extra money. If they want just the high res, they get the high res. And they print themselves. Okay. So, and the Instagram is more like a portfolio. Like, this is what I can. This is what we do. The full-size stuff and everything. And these are like, I had to understand if the if the idea of blowing up the sketch, if you like the sketch and if you blow it up, if it works or not, it does work. So, once it's getting bigger, um people can buy it but um let's say i started with very low price to be honest so i couldn't even um cover the expenses for the prints and um then i i tried to raise it nothing changed people were still buying then i raised it again and um, they were still buying. And I understood that at some point you need to have a, a certain background that you can say, okay, this is expensive because of these, 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 and these. So at the moment, I kind of sell things when I pop up. Let's say we have, we have now, uh, hopefully, a project with Morgan uh, München uh, because the guys, are, uh, uh, they like the stuff that I do. And when I come to them, I bring the same things. I show them. Most probably they're going to buy something. Uh, if not, then... And it all, and, and, and you, have always, you always have to check um, the reaction of the people. I mean, if, if I would sell it for 7,000 euros, 
you should be an idiot to buy it. But if I sell it for, I don't know, three, four, five hundred euros. Okay, so that's the sort of ballpark that it normally yeah. goes for. Okay. Yeah. So the the bigger ones are, well, they're twice bigger, they're twice more expensive. Okay. Plus the paper, plus the certificate and so on. So we did the certificate. There are certain rules. You see, there is a, a stamp. Yes. Um, you have the certain varnish to cover it. Yes. That it's not losing its um, juiciness, yes. so to say. You have to use an ink with a special pigment that it's um, lasting long. Can you show, show this? Yeah. But I, I think it would reflect. I don't know how to show. Oh, uh, okay. Fast. Too high down. Okay. There you go. Cool. So that's the. And then, as I as I said before, um, it's important for me that people treat it as an art piece, not as a poster. So you have to put it in a passepartout or in a frame that it uh, proudly sits in your room, not in the garage, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And um, to do that, or let's say, if I want to show it on an exhibition, you, it has to fulfill certain uh, regulations. Okay. And it does. So it's 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 a museum quality print. It's a very expensive print on a very expensive paper with very expensive ink varnish. And so on. So we we do small certificates where we explain what printer was that, what ink was that, when was it produced, how many pieces were produced. This time we didn't do the 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 amount because we didn't know the amount. So even for clarification, you don't you don't necessarily take one of your sketches, do five prints or ten prints, and say, okay, these are for sale. It's usually on a commission basis. It, no, um, when when everything started, because this is the first tryout, of course I, I picked up certain things, worked with them. I asked the guy, the, the printer guy, what settings, what format, how, how shall I do it? Um, he told me everything. So no, but I'm talking about if somebody, if somebody is interested in buying your stuff. Yeah, I oh, just, okay. uh, well, I have it, you can buy it. Okay. Uh, once I don't have it, I print something else, and that is a history. So, so you do have a stock. You do carry a, uh, a stock of prints that are available for purchase. Yeah. Okay. Okay. These are all for sale. Yeah. Okay. All right. And they should contact you through sell Porsche to buy Porsche. Okay. Great. You can do that. Let's have a look at that, and then. Oh, okay. Those two, and then we need to wrap up. Class, is that good? Good. Wow, amazing. So this, was, this was a small one. Yeah, you saw it uh, in, in the sketchbook. Yeah, probably. This, this is a small one. And when you blow it up, you see this. I don't know how to show maybe like this. Yeah? But you see the texture of marker, how it was spreading on the wow. paper. And then that that is giving a cool feeling, you know, to the, yeah. To the sketch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. shit. We need to show both of those, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this one you also Fuck, yeah this definitely basically the whole page i love that so actually it is my birthday next month Ivan. Mm. happy birthday thank you <laughs> <laughs> this one yes and we're done yes look at that my god look at that beautiful absolutely beautiful Ivan, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure to see these things in the flesh. And um, I want to see you by Porsche. Um, yeah, that would be... I, there are some ideas how to do it. And it would be in Los Angeles. So we would meet finally with Nikita and Ilya and the, the oil stain guys. Okay. Hopefully la uh, next year. Okay. One piece of advice for aspiring young car designers. Uh, very simple. Uh, follow your dream. 
just just like that convert it into goal and and push for it uh, there's nothing new i cannot say anything new i did the same the path is the same everybody had to pass this and draw 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 sketch sketch draw. sketch sketch if you want to if you want to achieve something just do it if it doesn't happen it's good because i saw a lot of designers that that had a lot of nice things in the beginning and then they were like going down because they don't know where to move they didn't have an idea where they have to go further you know you're moving slowly you're you're somehow growing slow yeah i i i started to sketch like this nine nine years after started studying <laughs> so it took a bit of time okay so just just be sure that you can do this you 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 fucking can you you really can you just have to be sure no one else has to be sure you have to be sure <laughs> dude that was awesome thank you <laughs> thanks <Fucking> great. <laughs>